Good afternoon, class. Good evening or good morning, whenever you happen to be watching this. So glad you're here today. Today, we're going to talk a little bit more about chemical equations. So this is going to be kind of one of the last new things. And it's really not even that new um, before our end of the year. So this will be, I believe, our last YouTube video. And we're going to have class again on Friday at our normal time. And that will be our last live class for the year. So today, we, we're going to start off with a little bit of review. So let's talk about if I have Mg and I have Cl. Hmm. If I have Mg and Cl, how many valence electrons do each of these have? Well, if we were to pull up your periodic table, you take a look and you see, uh, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, I know this. Mg So over here, and you notice this is an alkali earth metal, column 2a, so two valence electrons. Cl, that's a halogen. That's got one valence electrons because it's in 7a and it's one away from being full. Now, if we have a metal and a non-metal reacting together, these are going to form an ionic bond. So if I look at this, this magnesium, has two valence electrons. The chlorine, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What's gonna happen here? This magnesium is gonna send one of its electrons here. Hmm, in order for it to get rid of both of these electrons though, we need to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two chlorine molecules. That means we'll form an Mg, plus two, and then Cl2, which is minus two. That connection there is gonna form an ionic bond. Why? Because we have a positively charged metal and a negatively charged nonmetal attracted to each other. So when we have this, when we have MgCl2, this is magnesium chloride. Let's say I wanted to make this molecule. One way that people make this is they take magnesium metal, which is metal in sparklers, and then they add that to hydrochloric acid, which is HCl. Now, when those react together, what's gonna happen is, is they all break down in the water. So on this side, we've got an Mg, We've got an H connected to a Cl, and they form MgCl2 plus H2. So magnesium plus hydrochloric acid is going to create magnesium, that's called magnesium chloride, and then hydrogen gas. Now, why is that an H2? Because if you remember, this is a diatomic molecule. So you never really have hydrogen hanging out by itself. It's always got something else with it. If we were to draw this out, we see, hmm, Mg, we go, just kind of connect it to two Cl's there. No, it's not exactly the way you would draw it in chemistry. Just to show that these are all together, and these are all together. Now if we look here, just like we did in class the other day. So when we were talking about making airplanes out of Legos with different amounts of planes, and we can't add anything. We can only add full MGs and full CLs. Well, if we do that here, hmm, 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 hmm. If I look at this, if I have two of these, I've got one magnesium and two chlorines and two hydrogens, on my, what's the name of that side again? Oh, that's right. These are my reactants. And on the other side, I've got my products. So far, so good. Hopefully you remember both of those. Those are going to be on our test that were our last test that we're going to take. Now, Mg, two chlorines, two hydrogens. 
on the other side we've got a magnesium two chlorines and two hydrogens so we have balanced this equation we've come up with the right recipe if i want to make mgcl2 and 1h2o without anything left over i would need to have one magnesium and two hcls so this is a balanced chemical equation now cool thing about this if we look at this we can see this as the magnesium what it's doing is it's coming in and it's bumping out the hydrogen molecule that's here the metaphor that we often use for this is imagine we're gonna call this guy Steve and Steve really likes Sally but Sally is dating we'll call him Stewie so Steve Sally Stewie and Sally doesn't actually like Stu she likes Steve so she's coming over and then leaves him and then these two she leaves him and goes with Steve so that's sort of like in this case this would be magnesium Steve Sally would be the chlorine Stu would be the hydrogen so the chlorine would much rather be with the magnesium than the hydrogen that's why when we get these coming together this magnesium when it reacts with HCl we get this here now this is called a single displacement reaction in a single displacement reaction what's going to happen is is it's it's generally going to take the form of a plus bc makes a b plus c so to see that in our example here this would be a this would be b uh, this would actually be c and this would be b and then we get a b and c so when you displace something you're another word that's often used for this is a single replacement reaction so displacement and replacement in this context are equivalent to each other so in a single replacement reaction or displacement reaction the one thing that's by itself kicks it to the other side <coughs> so let's say i had silver um react with silver's ag and let's say we reacted that with um what's something non-reactive we'll go copper oh is copper more reactive i need to actually think about that um we'll do something we'll do a iron i know it's more reactive than iron iron chloride no we'll go oxide and that is going to form silver oxide that's tarnished silver sorry that that would be a g o i actually mean a g two o <clears throat> plus o two now whenever we're balancing we're going to draw out all our molecules so if we look at this we're going to get ag and the iron has two oxygens oo and then a g a g all these are linked together connected to an oxygen plus when we know oxygen has a double bond here if you don't know you should go back in your notes and find out why so if we look here i want you to take a crack at solving this so go ahead and pause the video here 
and um, balance the equation, please. All right, now that you've balanced the equation and or given up and or cheating, what we're going to do here is we're going to see, all right, we've got two silvers. We've got one, two, three oxygens. Huh, this seems a little bit tricky. How do we do this? Um, well, first, Mr. Jacob screwed up. So <laughs> this is actually going to form iron because I made that iron disappear. And that's not okay. So Mr. Jacobs goofed. So we're going to just say that it's going to go ahead and form iron by itself. So now that you've spent all the time going, I don't know if this is possible. Well, that's because Mr. Jacobs goofed up. So when we look at this, then all of a sudden this becomes much easier. So this here, we need to have two. And then we need to have four. If we do that, so we get a G, a G. A G, G, four silvers. Then we get two AGOs. And then one iron. And we are all balanced out. This is another example of a single replacement reaction. The other type of replacement reaction is called a double replacement reaction. So in a double replacement reaction, here's the way that you're going to remember this. So here's Steve and Sally. Yay, they're, they're happy. Or are they? And then over here, yeah, I know you're like, bum, 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 Mr. Jacobs. Here's Stu, that poor Stu. And Sarah, let's keep going with S names. Maybe we'll give her a little bow. Oh boy. Now in this situation, Steve and Sally realize, oh, hmm, well, I don't know if this is working out. And Stu and Sarah at the same time realize, I don't know if this is working out. And Sally realizes, man, maybe I was a little harsh on Stu. So, what happens is, is they wind up switching. It's like, oh, well, maybe Sarah would work out better. Maybe Stu and Sally would work out better. I know you guys are feeling very uncomfortable by this, but the general equation is AB plus CD is going to give us AD plus BC. So an example of this would be if I have NACL plus M, uh, we'll go an easier one, ah, it's, this is okay, MgO, and then that, that makes, so this is salt plus magnesium oxide, makes magnesium chloride, which we've already seen, and sodium oxide, which is Na2O. And you don't need to know why that's Na2O, just that it is. <clears throat> so if we look at this one, NaCl plus MgO, MgCl2 plus Na2O, we're going to balance this. But first, before we balance it, we see, okay, yes, I understand now, Mr. Jacobs. All that Sally and Stu and Sarah stuff was making me uncomfortable. But I see how the sodium is switching places so that the sodium now bonds with the oxygen, and the magnesium now bonds with the chlorine. So what's happening is, is A is reacting with D, and C is reacting with B. So it's a double displacement or double replacement. Or replacement. All right, now these are, are a little bit more fun, in my opinion, to try and balance. So if we look here, Na2O, NaO, Na, Mg, Cl to a Cl, and then NaCl and MgO. So we go here. There's one oxygen and one oxygen on each side. One magnesium and one magnesium in our reactants and in our products. But there's two sodiums, 
two chlorines over here and only one sodium and one chlorine over there. But since you're really good at this, you are like, ah, of course. If we add another sodium chloride, everything works out. Our reactants have the same number of atoms as our products. And we've balanced that. That's wonderful and a really good thing. Now, the last fun thing to talk about within these are explosions. So explosions, we react something with uh, a fuel plus oxygen is going to give you carbon dioxide and water. In every single explosion, or almost every single explosion, this is what's happening. This is why you can take a uh, candle and as soon as you, this is also combustion, any sort of combustion or um, fire that's happening or really oxidation too. Um, when we burned our steel wool, this is the, it followed this except it wasn't carbon dioxide and water. So let me give you an example. Methane, which is a natural gas, plus oxygen gives us carbon dioxide and water left over. This is also why if you've heard people talk about the dangers of fossil fuels and how that's linked to the changing temperature. This equation is part of that. So the carbon dioxide in the air is often what's being tracked within those different equations. So if we do this and set this up, we see, all right, CH4. I want you to try and draw that before I draw it. So, you know, oxygen's like that. And CO2, go ahead and try and draw CO2, what that looks like, knowing what you know about bonds. Because if you don't, those are actually going to be two that will most likely be on your test. You're welcome for listening to this because now you know it. So as you drew those, CH4 is like this. CO2 is a fun one. Double bond, double bond. All right, if we go here, I see hmm, one carbon and one carbon, two oxygens and to three oxygens. Oof. These are the most tricky to try and balance. Often they lead to different ratios. Um, let's just start with an easy fix. Let's just say, what if, what if I just added another water molecule over here? Now, I'm probably not going to put a combustion reaction on your test, but they're, they're fun. So if we go here, we've got four oxygens, four hydrogens, and one carbon. We've got four hydrogens, uh, one carbon, and only two oxygens. But if we add another oxygen molecule, which is O2, all of a sudden we are balanced. Let's just double check that. One carbon, one carbon, four oxygens, one, two, three, four oxygens, and four hydrogens. <coughs> okay, so your homework for today, um, and you need to have this finished before class on Friday, is to go ahead and you need to answer the questions for the what did we learn and taking it further. By Friday, before class. And that's for lesson number um, 17 and 18. Oops, you can't see that. I apologize. Okay, the rest of the homework for the week, you are going to need to read, but not answer questions, from the lessons that we kind of jumped over. So that's lesson 14, 15, and 16. So, homework, you need to turn these in by Friday for lessons 17 and 18. And then read, but not answer questions for 14, 15, and 16. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day, and I look forward to seeing you all on Friday. Have a great day.